Welcome back to Progressive A and part two of the Fast Days 2.0 forks. In this video, I'm gonna be taking you through how to rebuild these forks, how to revalve them. We're gonna be putting heavier weight oil in them and we're gonna be putting 60 pound spring in them as well as 35 to 60. Let's uh, cut to pass through it to uh, run you through rebuilding these forks and the whole process. Oh, I got lost on the way to you in an orange sky by the ocean blue every mile lost my soul renewed taken by the sunrise and the golden view walking slowly in the mountains underneath the constellations yeah i know that you've been waiting for me time is losing all its meaning Get it? Yeah. Get it, yeah? Yeah. Woohoo! <laughs> there you go, mate. Two blokes have been eating a bit of rubber. Yeah. We finally got this little bad boy off. Wow, that was uh, difficult. I mean, yes, we're not using the exact right tools. Um, Jared reckons we heated this up to about 200 degrees. Uh, we got it to the point that the oil started boiling. At least the leftover oil started evaporating and boiling off. That was hot enough to break this Loctite. It is lefty loosey. There's no fang dangle if you're doing this at home. It's lefty loosey, but it just takes a lot of berries. A lot of berries. But we got it off. So we're now going to uh, see what's inside and see what's involved with uh, re-shimming this. It's in this I have fully scored the uh, usher leg there by one bottom out. In here is our stack. This little thing here is all that's responsible for your compression and rebound. People that want to know a little bit more about how their suspension works. So imagine that this is up that way, right? Because they're an upside down fork. This here is your rebound adjuster. When your forks are the other way, basically this is all flipped, complete reverse, right? But anyway, in these fast aces, this is your rebound adjuster here. And then we have compression down the bottom. That works with a singular valve or a push rod or a, you know, basically closing off the uh, oil and uh, putting more pressure on the stack. But with your rebound, your rebound's pretty cool. This is basically a full hollow tube. If we take off this fancy little gold nut here, don't lose it, and we just do this, here is the push rod. So this rod actually pushes down on the stack that's in here, tightening the stack and i.e. making the uh, rebound slower. Loosening the stack is going to make the rebound faster. So if we've got the top cap here, just to uh, make it all go full circle, and we look at the top of our forks and we uh, wonder what we're actually doing, this is obviously turning this little bad boy here, which is putting pressure down on the stack. You've then got F and S, fast and slow, right? And so if we're loosening, we're fastening, fastening, that's not a word, we're speeding up the rebound, right? Making it faster. And then if we put it in, tightening, we're softening up the rebound, right? So there you go. A bit of uh, a bit of knowledge for you. So we're going to now take off this nut. We're then going to lay our shims out here. The uh, first shims that will come off will be our rebound shims. And the last shims that will come off will be our compression shims. There'll be two different triangular stacks, basically. And you can look up pictures on the internet on how this actually works. But I'm not going to bore you too much. are fully disassembled. We're now going to talk about revalving the forks. So here we've got our shim stacks. This side here is compression, 
This side here is rebound. All right, it starts from your biggest shim down to your smaller shim. So basically what happens is, is on one side, we have our compression plates and they stack it like this. On the other side, we got our rebound plates and they stack like this, right? Well, our shims. Right, what happens is, is on the way down, say this is our compression side, oil will try to flow through here and basically push the shims out of the way to then let the oil flow through, all right? Obviously, the tighter the shim stack, the less oil that can flow through, meaning a higher compression rate. And same goes for the rebound. So the rebound would be this side. So if we flip it over, so on the way up, oil then tries to feed through here. And obviously with your adjustment knob, you can adjust how tight the shim stack is against the uh, main, main valve body. That IE is either slowing down or speeding up your rebound. Looser stack is gonna speed up your rebound. Tighter stack is going to slow up your rebound. So there is your basic rundown on how valving works in a suspension. That is put into pure basics, all you need to know for this video, but there are videos out there explaining it a lot more in depth if you wanna learn more than what I just taught you. So when it comes to valving, what we're gonna be doing is simple. All we're gonna be doing to start off with is adding a shim to the end of each shim stack, right? So the compression will get another main shim and the rebound will get another main shim. That's all I think I'm gonna do for now. I don't really think I need to add another stage or anything like that. And if you wanna learn about stages, um, there's, as I said, there's other videos out there, but basically staging is a bit like, a bit like here, where basically there's a shim in between these other shims. And that's basically what you would call a, a second stage, basically. That just allows for a different feel, a different compression or rebound rate, um, depending on what you're going for. But we're not getting into that fine tooth combing yet. We are just going to be adding a shim. We might possibly have to drop a shim off the end. Um, I don't know how much wriggle room we have on the end of the shaft here, whether we can just add or whether we'll have to drop um, some smaller shims off the end, we'll see. So I've gone to the trouble of measuring all these shims for you so you do not have to. Um, there's an overlay up on the screen now. The shim we're gonna be adding today is this shim right here. It has an OD outer diameter of 20 mil, has an ID in a diameter of eight mil and a thickness of 0.10. We're gonna be adding one of those today, possibly dropping a small one off the end of the stack. We'll see if we have to or not. Now, full disclaimer, I got no idea what that, what's that gonna do for the feel of the bike. Hopefully just stiffen it up, give me a, a nicer feeling compression and rebound, because the first thing I noticed with these forks is they didn't have much real adjustment. Like you'd adjust the rebound and it didn't feel like it was doing a whole lot. So hopefully this change will help with that. So we've got our shims. What else are you gonna need? You're gonna be needing some fork oil. Now I've gone with some 10 weight. I've got no idea to be honest with you. I think it's like a five, six or a seven. I've got, I got no idea um, what weight is actually in the stock forks. Um, it's been very hard talking to fast days purely with the uh, language barrier. Great people. Just unfortunately, the language barrier is sort of getting in the way. So I haven't been able to find out what weight uh, oil is in the, in the shop, but that's not too much of a worry. I've got some 10 weight here we're gonna slap in. Um, I think it needs thicker oil anyway. And so if it's got five in it, I'm not too fast. Um, if we go a bit thicker. I might, I might even go five weight in the spring side yet, I just, I don't know, I'm, I'm thinking definitely 10 in the compression and rebound side, but the spring side is lubrication oil. So I might go five for that, just so it can move freely more around the fork and not get bound up being a thicker oil. So the two main things that are crucial to putting these forks back together, if you've already started this project at home, you would already know how difficult it was to pull these things apart because of the Loctite. Well, unfortunately, you gotta put that back on and it's gonna be just as difficult to get them back off next time. Loctite is on there for a reason. Don't think you can go without it. You need these things Loctited. It's pretty much all that holds them together, to be honest with you. 
So we're going to be using some 243 Loctite and some 7471 Primer T. Now this stuff is very important, right? We want to be spraying this down on our threads first before we put our Loctite on, otherwise our Loctite is going to do next to nothing, right? The Primer T is going to basically do exactly that. It's going to prime the surface and get rid of any oil residue. So get yourself some of that. Get yourself some uh, blue Loctite, some 243, and happy days. To be honest with you, blue Loctite is going to be nowhere near as strong as what comes on these forks, but that is going to be ample, so it will be easier next time pulling these apart if you have to. Another thing we're going to need is a uh, measuring cup of some kind. We need to uh, measure the oil that's in here. Obviously, if you're watching this, you will know how much oil goes in these forks because I would have already measured it for you. But you're still going to need one of these to uh, measure it out and put the oil uh, back in the forks. Now, last but not least, you are going to need a beefier spring. So I have got the 60 pound spring and I've got the 35 to 60. I'm going to try both for you. And I know which one I reckon I'm going to end up with is the 60 pound, but the 35 to 60 is going in first, just for you guys. Without further ado, let's get started. Right, we're going to start by putting our valving back together. These shims need to go back in the exact same order they came off, so make sure to lay them down nice and neatly when you pull it apart. If you haven't done that, hopefully your saving grace is looking at my photo and going, oh! That's the order they go in, the happy days. But we're gonna start with our compression chimps. They will go on first and then our rebounder on the end. Um, this little bad boy, the chamfered sides face out, the smallest valves face out, the fatter valves face in. Let's have a look at these uh, lovely shims we got here. These are gonna be our go for the rebound side and then these ones are gonna be for our compression side. Before we go any further, we're going to measure out the oil. This is the spring side. We grab our nice little measuring cup and very carefully pour this in. There's 110 milliliters in the spring side, and we got 280 mils in the uh, compression and rebound side. As you can see, the uh, oil doesn't look too pretty. That's because I bottomed the forks out in uh, factory form, and it did a bit of a number to the top of the leg. Lucky it's not going to uh, hinder the forks. Lately you don't feel like yourself and you kind of hate it. You suppress all of the thoughts in your head and say it's complicated. You hide your pain, but I can see it. It's on your face. I know the feeling where you well, That was funny. That was very funny. Now we forgot one vital step. And that was reinstalling the uh, compression adjuster. Nice! Stoked! Okay, but you barely breathe it. Don't you walk away. There's a feel you're getting lost. The feel you're trailing off. Feel it in your words when you say there's nothing wrong. There's something so subliminal. The way that your hands shake whenever you talk You stare into space like you're lost in your thoughts Surrounded by your paper walls Tell me what's been going on
touch your hands like whenever you talk I stare into space like you're lost in your thoughts So I by your paper walls Tell me what's been going on 